Welcome and greetings to Adult Bible Study. Today's lesson is uh, titled, God Honors, and the scripture is uh, 2 Kings 12, verses 4 through 16. But before we get into these scripture verses, I need to give a little bit of background uh, leading up to the events that we're going to study. So, let's do a little history. Israel and Judah, the divided kingdoms, were in battles with each other and in conflict with each other. So, Jehu, who was the king of Israel, killed Ahaziah, who was the king of Judah. Athaphiah, Ahaziah's mother, assumed control over Judah after he was killed. And she decided that she was going to kill all the royal line. Only one survived, Joash. And the reason Joash survived was because the priest, Jehoiada, secreted Joash who was just a very small boy at the time, into the temple. And there in the temple, Joash was raised by Jehoiada. After a number of years, Jehoiada arranged with others to crown Joash king. He was the rightful king and to kill Athathagela. So, we start here with Joash being the king of Judah, and Jehoiada is the priest. So, starting with verse 4, let us read. Joash said to the priest, Gather all the money that is brought as sacred offerings to the temple of the Lord. The money collected in the census, the money received from personal vows, and the money brought voluntarily to the temple. Let every priest receive money from one of the treasurers, then use it to repair whatever damage is found in the temple. Joash, as I said, was raised in the temple, and he saw the, the damage over the years that took place in the temple. Some of this damage was just probably natural wear and tear over time, but a lot of the damage was probably uh, brought on by Baal worshipers who literally robbed things out of the temple to take to, the, to their own temples. Uh, so Joash had this love for the temple, if you will. He wanted it to be worthy of worshiping God. So the first recorded act of Joash after he was made king was to tell the priest to take money and start repairing the temple. And he goes into some detail here. He says, collect all the money that is brought as sacred offerings. Here, sacred offerings is probably talking about um, just generically what he's going to mention next. And he says, the money collected in the census. Now, back in Exodus chapter 30, the Lord instructed his people to bring a half shekel per person to the sanctuary. And this is probably what Joash is talking about here 
when he's talking about the money that's brought as part of the census. So this was, this was gifts are giving uh, commanded by, by God. He also says, uh, collect the uh, offerings uh, received from personal vows and the money brought voluntarily in the temple. Some people gave money uh, for different reasons, for personal reasons. Uh, maybe uh, they were honoring God because of blessing. Maybe they felt guilty of something, or maybe they even uh, made a vow to God that says, Lord, if you will do this, I will promise to give this. The people were good about giving. Uh, it was something that was built into their, um, their worship. So we're talking about a fair amount of uh, money here. And also the money brought voluntarily to the temple. And this is other money that people gave freely not because of a Lord's command. Uh, it's kind of like when we these days talk about tithes and offerings and we differentiate them with tithes being the 10% that we are um, supposed to, obligated, if you will, to give. And offerings are things beyond that 10%, beyond that tithe. So that's what um, Joash is telling the priest here. And what are they to use this money for? To repair the temple. So he is giving this responsibility of the priest, which kind of makes sense because the priests are the overseers of the temple. Let's read them. But by the 23rd year of King Joash, the priests still had not repaired the temple. There's some thought that uh, Joash uh, became king uh, still in his youth, maybe even as young as seven. But that's not definite. But after his 23rd year of his reign, the priest had not repaired the temple. So Joash was disappointed. Verse 7, therefore King Joash summoned Jehoiada, the priest, and the other priest, and asked them, why aren't you repairing the damage done to the temple? Now, they don't give us the answer here. They don't, they don't, uh, here in the scripture, it doesn't say what the priest responded to that question. But Joash continues by giving them these instructions. Take no more money from your treasurers, but hand it over for repairing the temple. Take no more money from your treasurers. Now, the treasurers were probably um, the, the, the clerks, the accountants, if you will, the people who, who took the money in and were kind of the bankers of the, um, of the uh, temple, um, kept it safe and kept it accounted for. <clears throat> so he's telling the priest, don't take this money anymore like I told you previously. So what are they supposed to do with it? Well, the priest agreed that they would not collect any more money from the people, that is from the treasurers, and that they would not repair the temple themselves. <coughs> it appears that the um, priest recognized the fact that repairing the temple was not part of their skill set. They were not contractors. They really wanted to do it, but 
they had other duties that seemed to be more important to them. And they really didn't know how to organize it, how to make it happen. It wasn't just a little fix it up kind of activity. It was major repairs. This was stuff that required a lot of craftsmen, a lot of planning, a lot of work, a lot of organization. The priests just weren't up to it. They had many, many other things uh, that were part of their responsibilities. Verse 9, Jehoiada, the priest, took a chest and bored a hole in its lid. He placed it beside the altar on the right side as one enters the temple of the Lord. The priest who guarded the entrance put into the chest all the money that was brought to the temple of the Lord. So he took this money and put it in a chest that he had prepared, set it aside, if you will. Going on to verse 10. Whenever they saw that there was a large amount of money in the chest, the royal secretary, that was uh, one of Joash's people, and the high priest came together. They counted the money that had been brought into the temple of the Lord and put it into bags. When the amount had been determined, it's when they'd counted it, they gave the money to the men appointed to supervise the work in the temple. And with it, they, these supervisors, paid those who worked on the temple of the Lord, the carpenters and builders, the masons and stonecutters. They purchased timber and blocks of dressed stone for the repair of the temple of the Lord and met all other expenses of restoring the temple. So they changed the plan. They collected the money and then the uh, king's representative and a priest counted all the money, distributed it to the contractors who were responsible for repairing the temple. And the contractors then did what they were supposed to do with it and they paid the the workers, and they, they bought the material necessary for making the repairs. Verse 13, the money brought into the temple was not spent for making silver basins, wick trimmers, sprinkling bowls, trumpets, or any other articles of gold or silver for the temple of the Lord. It was paid to the workers who used it to repair the temple. Now, what's the point here? Now, there were other expenses in the temple. Uh, they had to have certain uh, items uh, as part of the worship process. What they're saying here is this money that was collected was not used for any of those items of worship. It was strictly dedicated to the repair of the temple. Verse 15, they did not require an accounting from those whom they gave the money to pay the workers because they acted with complete honesty. The money from the guilt offerings and sin offerings was brought into the temple of the Lord. It belonged to the priest. So two different things here. One is that the, uh, the money that was given to the contractors, um, they didn't follow up on it. They didn't ask for any accounting because these contractors were honest. They had integrity. Uh, they knew that they were doing the Lord's work. But the priest still had to live, if you will, and be taken care of. And there was money designated for the priest. The money from the guilt offerings and the sin offerings was given to the priest 
for their um, sustaining, if you will, to take care of the priest. As I was studying this lesson, it kind of made me think about money, the Lord's money, money given to the church. So often, the usual thing is when we talk about the church and the money, we talk about the giving side of it. Uh, we try to encourage people to be faithful in their giving, and that is very important. But this lesson leans more toward the spending of that money, using that money properly, the stewardship, if you will, of that money, taking care of the Lord's house, taking care of the Lord's people, honoring God with that money. So we should always look at both sides of the money that the church receives and spends. The money that the church receives is God's money, not our money. And the money that the church spends is God's money, not our money. And we should be faithful and spend it with good stewardship and integrity. Thank you.